in this Christmas edition of The Advocate, I wish to pitch my gaze on rural dwellers and the myth built around their stead by the widespread spectrum of society. So I speak on village people. For two decades, I studied the psychology of power with great passion. I asked Rabbi endless questions on the bane of power as a wagon of social influence in corporate and informal settings. How manipulations, seduction, superstition, intimidation, hypnotism, and witchcraft are used and contrived by men at their varying levels of thought, education, environment, and understanding. Beliefs have it that village people use extraterrestrial powers to deploy forces against urban dwellers. That every action, inaction, and the reaction of the urban populace are remotely orchestrated by village people. Those who hold this belief rely solely on stories forced down on them from generation to generation. Is the villager guilty as charged? I leave that to your judgment. Power is a natural taste, and everyone wants a measure of it. With power, people control others, manipulate and induce them to a point of decision, covenant, pledge, influence, agreement, and trust. The implication of the aforementioned is that the interests so protected here extend beyond the common good of parties. The captor in this context masterminds the enslavement of the captive and watch him gradually slope into pain while he remains awake to watch this with unwavering pleasure. It is what it is. Kings lack the caution of common men. This is the physical dynamics of power. The perception that village people manipulate the life of their victims and cause them to die at the prime of their achievement is spiritual, sometimes relative and geography sensitive. This belief is very African, like a corollary to that same belief system. Highly religious people pray for others to die so they alone can inherit the earth. Are these religious people practicing the same occupation with village people? Who is who here? I implore you to be the judge here again. A spiritual assessment of fact reveals that the contextual perception that village people are executioner is probable, but same if sub subjected to deep critical assessment has consistently failed the test of empirical evidence for want of logical and clear court probabilities. Village people, for whatever they are known for, are humans and ought not to be judged by the proclivities of their geography. The very minute callous ones among them have earned for the whole the prognosis of eternal condemnation from all who had judged them guilty for being responsible for any young wealthy man that dies in his community. With this, it appears that natural cause of death no longer have a place in society. I will therefore advocate that we must deal with the margin of error and engage society with the common truth of providence that this age-long superstitious belief must make way for new conversation of civilization that will recast cultural psychology and purge society of contempt and renew her with the purity of the spirit of knowledge and the hope to free society from the clutches of redundancy and retrogression. I say, Merry Christmas to you. I shall go to Rabbi again.
Interesting, interesting piece. Oh. Uh, you know, I, I, I saw this uh, uh, thing on, so the, uh, on the no on the social media <laughs> recently. Uh, it was trending. Someone was asking, how come when Nigerians go abroad, they suddenly get less religious? So uh, the number of fasting days, the number of vigils, and all of that tend to reduce. Uh, and the natural responses I got from a lot of respondents was that look. When they, see, when they see a system that works, some of the things that need binding and casting are no longer necessary. So when the roads are better, the accidents tend to reduce. When the healthcare system works, the avoidable deaths just tend to go down. And so a lot of things that take their time and you challenge village people how they send this, how they send that, just started leaving the table. So, the, the prayer point that has to do with village people start to go down. Yes. You know? So th th these are the realities of our society. The village people themselves sometimes enjoy that power play because it <laughs> gives them some sort of control that, look, that London where you go, if you know, remember me, I go shake something, you go pack your load overnight and you go begin coming. <laughs> so somebody <laughs> will take cognizance of that and remember that I someone in the village. Chuka, do you agree? You're in the UK. Yep. Are village yes. people with you there? The, you see, the thing is, we are, we are of the belief that the village people, that their power does not cross the borders of Nigeria. <laughs> so they can't reach so, Chuka. That's, yes, that they cannot reach here. So, for instance, as I'm here now, I'm not worried about anything from the village. Um, <laughs> it will have to wait for me to come back. And that, that's a very serious matter because it is honestly, I mean, Evans has said a lot of these things. There's no empirical evidence for them. So I don't know where the evidence is that it will not work in England if it is originated in Oguashuku in Delta State. So, and that I have to come back to Nigeria for it to work. Now, I ask the question, Nigeria as a place, it's not the same exact thing as Oguashuku in Delta State, which is a particular place. Why does the power of the village people even leave the boundaries of the village? And, and, then, and then why is it constrained to just Nigeria? Perhaps if I go to Benin Republic, I'll be okay as well. So it's just a line, a geographical line is the end of their powers. Interesting. Well, you're thinking there are no uh, village people abroad. But we know of cases of people who've suddenly packed their things, their belongings, and <laughs> appeared in Lagos or their village because they had been summoned by the villagers. <laughs> Village people. By <laughs> African insurance. <laughs> it's some kind of Bluetooth. <laughs> Although, to be honest, though, a lot of people, when they are relocating abroad, like with their families, it, 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 this is what used to happen. It used to, it's, I think it still does happen. They go and offer, they go and do their village things before they leave for protection abroad. Hmm. It's, so it's a well known thing. Point, can I, can I, can I yeah. share a, 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 a story real quick? I have a cousin um, who won this uh, American lottery. And shortly before he left Nigeria, he just started falling ill. Serious ailment that at some point, even the teaching hospital said, look, I can't handle this. But somehow, uh, it got a bit well, and they just managed to get him on the aircraft, and he went to the US. So he went to a hospital in Houston, Ben Taub, where he was diagnosed. And in a few days, he started to get much better. Within a couple of weeks, this young man was great all over again. Now, if that man had died in Nigeria, they would have said he was killed. So was it, could it be that whatever they planted, the witches and wizards from, uh, uh, from the, the village, village, whatever they planted on his body dropped off when he got on the aircraft? Or what, what could have happened to that kind of person? Over now, to you, village falls, man. <laughs> it, it, it still falls within the confines of <clears throat> what, what I'm saying, because we have magnified these forces to the point that we are scared of their claws. Mm. Okay, um, I remember then while we were in the law school, there's this uh, friend of mine who, because while you're in the law school, you have to attend the three compulsory dinner, okay? On the second dinner, he was at a hostel. I think he dozed off. And by the time he woke up, dinner was the dinner was already ongoing and the door has been shut. Okay, and once that happens, you cannot be caught over that year. Wow. wow. So he got to the, to the door, he was knocking, and the place is already shut. 
At the end of the day, when we now, you know, finished and came out, immediately we saw him. The first thing a friend said is that they are following you from, from the village. village. <laughs> <laughs> that is why you have to doze off, you know, a few minutes to the oh. dinner. And he wasn't called to buy that here. Oh, my God. So I, 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 I do not think that his village people did that remote that, what do you, you think know, happened? that so what cast happened? a spell on him and he fell asleep. I think that sleeping is a natural cause. That is what I think. But we also need to probe what he did the night before. Yeah, those are issues. Mm. But what I want to see and I want to take away from here is that at this time of the year, Nigerians generally travel to their villages. Yes. It's as if Jesus was born in their villages. But, you know, <laughs> they just do all kinds of things. They make sure they move things, especially our brothers on the eastern part of yes. the country. They just move like we move mm. to the village. And um, most times it costs money. It costs lives sometimes right. because sure. they have accidents sure. on the road and we never see them again and sometimes they come back with wives so village people can really be nice yeah of course so they come back with wives from the villagers and then they start living nicely <laughs> yes if they come back with gari plantain yam <laughs> that is why those who sell food stuff in lagos they say january is a bad month for them because people don't patronize them that when they take stock of sales they find out that they have a lot left yeah. after, because people will not come to buy because they are, they they are still, from they're the still stuck. So what's the well, point about, <coughs> your, about villagers that you said today that we should embrace going to the village, should not be afraid of villagers? We should not be village. afraid of them. That they, I've, I've, I've said it already that the, the imaginary forces we think that reside uh, within the, the village people and their confines it's not as dangerous as we make it to look. In other words, it's a, you're telling us it's an illusion. We shouldn't believe in yeah, it. It is an it illusion. Is. There, there is, I, I said something there that the few dangerous ones among them, okay, the few callous ones among them, have you know, made it look like everybody in the village are against city dwellers. And that whatever <laughs> you see that happens in the city is remote or is remoted from the village. And if if they are that is, bad, we will not gather our winnings for an entire year, put it in a vehicle, and go to them in the village to go yes. and show off how our, our conquest, if they are that bad. Yes. That's true. Well, keep broadening the conversation with your comments on our episode. Our advocacy will definitely be incomplete without your contribution. God's own King's Man says on our last advocacy, Nobody in Nigeria will want to take the COVID-19 vaccine. Hmm. Also, Ben Adams says, anyone who loses public funds should remain in prison and perfect the project in which the money he or she stole was meant for. Then when he has completed the project, then he can be free. No bail. <laughs> Thank you, God's own Kingsman and Ben Adams, for your comments. Yes. Do continue to participate with us on our social media platform on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, the Advocate NG. To catch up with our previous brokers, go to PlusTVAfrica.com, the Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Bola will preach on the act of giving this season of Christmas. Merry Christmas. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese, 
If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.